So I'm gonna give you these to hold on to. Is there a good way to be holding them? You're doing a great job. Cities are some of the most unique labs on Earth. As humans create a built environment, plants and animals are finding new ways to thrive in these urban areas, and scientists are finding novel ways to study them. Gizmodo recently hung out with a couple of urban ecologists in New York City, which millions of pigeons and rats call home. My name is Elizabeth Carlin. I'm a PhD student, and I work on urban evolution on pigeons. I'm trying to understand why pigeons do so well in cities. Cities are really inhospitable environments. They're hot. They are full of pollution, chemicals, and light pollution and noise pollution. Yet some animals are really doing well. They're, they're thriving here. I'm a visiting scholar of research at Fordham University, and I'm a behavioral ecologist with interest in chemical ecology. We're hoping to learn both theoretical and practical applications to deconstruct the silent language of sense for small nocturnal mammals. Both Parsons and Carlin do field research in New York City. But because Carlin wants to understand just how urbanization is impacting feral pigeons, which are descendants of wild European rock doves, she's been traveling from Boston to Washington, D.C. to see how different pigeon populations are related and whether there's a genetic difference between urban and suburban birds. Since Carlin's work takes her on the road so often, she carries all of her research supplies with her. So we're heading out to the Bronx right now. We're heading out to the Bronx. We're gonna try to hit up the Kingsbridge Armory. There's a large flock of pigeons that I've had success capturing before. This is my car and this is my mobile lab. And it has all the field supplies that I might need in it. Here is my net cannon. Um, inside here is a net that gets shot out over the pigeons and it's powered by CO2. So we're about to drop some corn. We'll get them all concentrated in a single area and then I'll fire the net gun. Pigeons can tell us a lot about urbanization because they're found in cities all over the world. They're found on six of the seven continents, everywhere but Antarctica. They can tell us how organisms that do well in cities, why they're doing well in cities, what adaptations, what unique traits and characteristics do urban animals have that allow them to do well in these urban environments. We're gonna go back and process these. You can see they're pretty calm once they've been caught. You're okay. We're not gonna hurt you. First thing I need to do is band the foot. So just hold up the leg put the band around it, and then these pliers clamp it around, and that band will stay on there. Now we get blood. Take this needle and very slowly go in and pull out. Put a little styptic powder just in case it's not clotting, but he's doing good. You ready to release this bird? Yeah, let's release it. Okay, so you're just gonna kind of open your hands and he's gonna fly off. All right. Carlin isn't just collecting data from live pigeons either. Even dead pigeons can offer valuable DNA samples. What I'm going to do right now is clip off some toes from this dead pigeon that we spotted. Okay, let's head up to the lab. On the other side of town, Michael Parsons is conducting field work of his own at a waste facility in Brooklyn's Greenpoint neighborhood, where a population of rats live. When we recently visited Parsons at the facility, he showed us how he tracks rats in order to understand the way that naturally produced signaling chemicals called pheromones impact their behavior. Welcome to Middle Earth, otherwise uh, known as our field area. And this is where we set traps for the rats. You know, I just arbitrarily chose this rat because it was quite large and I felt it would be easier to work with. Some of the larger rats are actually more docile than the smaller ones. The smaller ones are really quick and yippy and they can nip at you, uh, whereas the, the large ones you can grasp a little bit. Parsons hopes to discover what attracts rats by seeing their responses to natural pheromones. He sets traps around the facility to catch the rats, then anesthetizes them. Parsons takes a small tissue sample to get DNA and then implants RFID chips in the animals so that he can track how they're moving around the facility in response to the pheromones. The RFID chip is about the size of a grain of rice, and it's injected painlessly under the rat's skin. 
The process is similar to how you'd implant a chip in your dog or cat. But while a vet may use a wand to identify a lost pet, the process with these chips is different. Parsons has RFID sensors in four spots around his experimental area within the waste facility. Whenever a rat gets close, the RFID sensor records it and sends data to a spreadsheet about which rat was nearby and when. Pheromones are naturally produced chemicals that animals can use to signal information to one another. They can be produced to signal stress, to mark territory, or to attract a mate. In his experiment, Parsons places used rat nesting materials that are chock full of these pheromones on the RFID sensors to see how the rats will respond to them. As the RFID system and his cameras collect more data, Parsons is learning about which rats are attracted to certain pheromones, and then he can start to make assumptions about how this affects their behavior. In the future, this kind of information could help pest control experts deal with infestations more effectively. The Northeast Megalopolis is a huge chain of cities, stretching from Boston down to Washington, D.C. It includes large urban areas, such as Baltimore and Providence, Rhode Island, and New York City, but also the suburbs that connect them. About 40 minutes north of New York City is Fordham's Lewis Calder Center. Carlin needs the tools in this lab to extract the DNA from the samples she collected in the field and then analyze the data. I am extracting DNA from these pigeons to understand how they're related to each other in the same way that your DNA tells you that you're more closely related to your siblings and to your parents than you are to your next door neighbor. Um, I can do that with these pigeons. So this is proteinase K and it digests the tissue. It's a proteinase, so it's digesting those proteins and making that, that DNA available. Did you explain that to an idiot? That was my idiot version. Yeah. <laughs> Even something that we see every day like a pigeon, we don't know everything about it. And so I hope it inspires other people to continue to ask questions about the world around them and not feel like we've answered all the questions already. By 2050, two thirds of the humans on Earth will live in cities. But urbanization is a relatively new process that's putting immense pressure on the organisms that live in these areas. We don't know for sure how cities are impacting them, but research like this is essential to better understand the broader impacts of urban living on planet Earth. Thanks to the innovative work by scientists like Liz Carlin and Michael Parsons, we're starting to understand exactly how cities are shaping the future of life on Earth, one rat and one pigeon at a time.